I'm joined now by Dr. Moshi Schiff, and he is the founding co-director of the Sackler Institute for Epigenetics and Psychobiology at McGill University. Thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome. So you're talking about how social environment can affect DNA, is that correct? Right. right. So how, how can it affect behavior? So one of the greatest mysteries of humans was how ephemeral things like social behavior mm -hmm. can change a physical thing like a human being. Um, we kind of dismissed that possibility, although we knew it happens. We knew that social environments have a huge impact on the phenotype, especially the environments early in life. Now we understand that there are molecular links by which the social environment can actually talk to the DNA and tweak the way the DNA is modified and thus change the phenotype of the organism or the human. That's incredible. How can you take this uh, type of research and how, how is it actually going to help people with mental illness? It will allow us to understand some mysteries in mental illness, like the connection between child adversity and mental disease later in life. Also, it will allow us to understand why we don't have a genetic basis for many mental illnesses in spite of very intensive research in the last decade or so. Uh, it provides a whole level where to look for uh, causes for mental disease, but also where to look for possible interventions, possible predictions, and possible therapeutics. Wow. What are you looking forward to uh, sort of focusing on and telling people about the most in this field? I think the field tells us that what we knew was correct, that early life environment, maternal and paternal care, uh, the kind of society that we build for children will have a huge impact on their physical and mental health. Now we understand the scientific basis for that. It's not just soft talk, it's becoming hard science. But also it teaches us that these processes are essentially reversible because the difference between genetics and epigenetics is that epigenetics could be changed. It could be changed because proteins uh, put those marks on DNA and also remove them. So with either drugs or experience, we might be able to change them. So the message is essentially optimistic. Uh, if you're born with a so-called bad gene, there's not much you can do about it, but epigenetic changes are potentially therapeutically malleable. How do you think this could change the stigma around mental health? It provides the same mechanism for mental health as we have for cancer. Because what we have in cancer, it changes, it are changes in DNA methylation. What we see in mental health is exactly the same changes at the gene level. And so there is no real difference between mental and physical health. They are well connected. Um, and the way you treat cancer, you should treat mental health. And the way nobody is ashamed to say he has or she has cancer, there's right. no shame in depression or post-traumatic stress. That's fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me today. You're welcome. Have a great time yeah, with the rest of the conference. Thank you.